Good afternoon and welcome to today's sponsored content webinar with Spry. I'm Kara Dietzel, Director at NACTA, and we're glad to have you with us. Spry was founded in 2020 as a technical solution with the purpose of helping with the new rules regarding NIL. Spry has continued to grow and expand their product offerings that will streamline your athletic department's NIL processes and compliance systems. Moderating our discussion today is Todd Harrison. Todd is the Compliance Advisor with Spry and former Senior Athletics Director of Compliance with over 20 years of experience. Joining Todd is Justin Campbell, Assistant AD for Compliance at Florida Atlantic University, and Julie Sommer, Board of Directors at the Drake Group. Later, we will be joined by Grady Gu and Lyle Adams at Spry to provide a demo on the company's newest product. And helping to facilitate the Q&A is Sarah Kanish and Matt Suchecki with Spry. Before we begin, a quick reminder for our live attendees to utilize the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom window and send in your questions throughout the discussions as we have a lot of time to answer them. An email will be sent out tomorrow to all registered attendees with a link to today's recording. And with that, I'm gonna hand things over to Todd. Thank you, Kara. It's a pleasure to be back partnering with you and NACTA once again. And, and I'd like to start by just welcoming our panelists once again. So welcome, Julie and Justin. Uh, thank you so much uh, both for, for joining us this afternoon for this conversation about technology. Well, you know, we all know that technology is, is constantly changing. And so the challenge for us as practitioners is figuring out how we can best leverage technology and use it to our advantage. So with that in mind, we'll just, we'll just jump right into it. Julie, at the Drake Group, you, know, you operate in a number of different spaces, tackling issues ranging from academic integrity to gender equity issues to student health and safety. So first, could you maybe provide a little bit of an overview of the work you do at the Drake Group, just for those who may not be as familiar, and then um, also talk a little bit about how you feel technology can best help you reach the various stakeholders in these areas. Sure. Thank you, Todd. Um, happy to be here today. Um, so with the Drake Group, we are a national think tank um, with members all over the country and uh, made up of um, academic leaders, uh, administrators, former administrators, it's a pretty accomplished group, um, college professors, uh, and a, basically what the, the function of the group is, is to provide um, their learned experience uh, and opinions on, uh, as an independent voice in college athletics, which makes the Drake group very unique, um, on uh, basically all of the issues facing college athletics, primarily focused on academic integrity. Um, but with uh, you know, so much happening in the college sports realm, uh, especially with the advent of NIL, um, we also lend a lot of um, expertise and uh, in terms of position papers, uh, press releases, and uh, a lot of work with policymakers in terms of um, basically uh, wholesale college athlete rights, uh, which I would also posit that academic integrity is, a, is a, certainly a right of a college athlete. So, um, you know, getting a, ensuring a proper education in addition to um, participating in, in their sport. So that's, that's the Drake Group. And um, to address uh, your, your second question, in terms of um, technology and, and reaching, uh, you know, the various uh, stakeholders that are important for, for these issues, uh, the lawmakers, um, athletic leaders, um, or college athletes, themselves, who we um, engage with as well, uh, you know, we, we know that technology makes it easier for everybody. And we know that public opinion is influenced by what's out there in the, in the blogosphere, the, the news, social media, and popular websites. And um, you have great companies like Spry, and their site, their tools, helping athletes, not just, you know, the big marquee college athletes and institutions navigate this um, you know, currently pretty crazy world that we're in with, with NIL and, and the advent of that, uh, where well, we're still absent any, any national uniform policy. And with, with no national law yet, I think uh, technology becomes really key, even more key, and, and the best way to cross-pollinate, to share stories, to um, share ideas, and you know, know what's happening on the ground. Uh, and I think you know, Spry is very much in, in the thick of that. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's how we at the Drake Group, that's how we get our information and, and institutions and state legislatures have been doing that as well as they're, you know, creating their different bills, eyeing other states' bills and, and uh, amending those bills and so on. So I think if you, if you center on, on tech and advocacy, 
um, you know, on the one hand, you have the old fashioned way that has sort of fallen by the wayside during the pandemic of simply research, being organized, knowing who to connect with and, and hitting the pavement and, and putting in the hard work and time and meeting with key uh, policymakers, which we do and we have been doing. Um, but barring any substitute with having that kind of face time, we turn to online platforms. So I think um, one thing it's important to recognize, uh, you know, organizations face a uh, tremendous ability gap with, with greatly varying audiences on, on various media platforms, but especially with social media, you know, you might have um, Facebook with uh, users who are generally now of a different generation than those using TikTok or um, you know, have an even different audience on, on Twitter and Instagram and, and what those platforms have uh, the ability to convey information wise. Um, and then you have some who are using all of those platforms, but certainly not the majority. So I think um, having a, uh, a sophisticated multi-level strategy to even know what people are using, what platform, how to reach those different audiences uh, with information that, um, that is useful. Um, the uh, concept of this multi-generational approach and, and understanding why we have to be in different places for different audiences, um, I think is really important. And there, you know, we need to have an infrastructure for that. Um, we know that technology can be disruptive. Uh, we know that has, it has the ability to uh, really get people thinking and, and create real action. We saw that in 2021 with uh, Sedona Prince and all she accomplished was just one TikTok. So it, it, you know, we know it basically led to wholesale change at the final four and the NCAA commissioned report on championships in all of the NCAA. So it's, it's a very powerful tool that we just need to figure out how to organize it and reach those key audiences. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Julie. You, you touched on a number of important topics, one of which is that, again, you know, NIL and technology is not just for those marquee names. In fact, it, it, you know, NIL is for everyone. And I think that that really... Um, it brings to the forefront the importance of having, you know, platforms that can can reach the masses and, and not just a select few. And, you know, along those lines, you know, Justin, I'm, I'm sure as we talk about um, reaching all of our student athletes, I'm sure you've probably experienced some some challenges along that front on campus. I, and I know when I first got into the business, you know, we were we were still piling 50 to 100 student athletes into a room and and you know, talking at them for an hour or so, but I think we've realized that there are probably more effective and, and certainly more, more efficient ways of, of getting information out to our student athletes. And so could you talk a little bit about some of the ways that you've been able to use technology to disseminate information, um, you know, to, to student athletes and also where some of the gaps currently exist with regard to that? Uh, surely, Todd. And, you know, I will say, you know, as I sit in this room preparing for our 2.30 meeting with uh, with our student athletes, that I think there is still some viability um, when talking to kids face to face. You know, some sometimes you um, can better get out uh, things from the student athletes when you have that face to face interaction, especially when you need them to complete forms uh, that they may not uh, pay as much attention to if you're just sending them emails and, and texts and things of that nature. But um, no, I think, you know, for, for us, you know, here at FAU and, you know, at my previous stops, um, I think technology has played a, a big part in educating the student athletes, uh, mainly just from a efficiency standpoint, right? There's only so many times that we can get in front of students uh, during a given year. And those times always come with, you know, their requisite headaches, right? Like it takes time to schedule around their finals and practices and competitions, uh, just efficiencies that are sometimes hard to realize. And so in addition to the in-person meetings, of course, you know, we will utilize uh, different on-campus technologies to send them um, education, uh, whether that be uh, in the form of a PowerPoint, in the form of an email, in the form of a video. Um, and we have we utilized various campus partners to accomplish that, uh, or even a survey. Um, and so, um, yeah, no, I think, you know, technology helps us in that vein uh, to be able to get more in front of the kids at a higher volume uh, than we would be able to if we were just meeting in person. Um, but both have their positives and negatives, right? Sure, sure. No, and, and your point's well taken. You, I think there, there's always going to be a need for that, that personal touch. But I think as you also, you know, alluded to, I mean, it's, it's difficult sometimes to have, to find the opportunities to to have that in-person interaction with our students. And so 
I think you touched on a number of the, you know, of the benefits of technology in terms of the way it can, can reach um, larger groups of student athletes and, and also kind of deliver that critical information. And so, you know, when you were speaking earlier, Julie, you, you touched on a number of different types of issues, social issues, political issues um, that, that we need to be discussing with student athletes. And, and Justin, you've, you've touched on a number, you mentioned the compliance meeting that, that you're about to have with your student athletes. And so there are, there's a whole myriad of issues that, that we need to get in front of student athletes as administrators and, and those involved in athletics. And so, um, but, but obviously one of the issues that has taken center stage recently anyway is NIL. And, and this question is really, um, you know, for, for both of you, you know, we're, we're not, we're officially still not quite a year into NIL yet, although it feels like we've been talking about NIL forever, but how has NIL changed how you use technology? And I guess the part B to that question would be how, how has NIL changed the way you would like to be able to use technology in your respective roles going forward? And, and again, I'd love to hear both of your um, takes on that. Sure. Uh, would you oh, like go, go ahead. I uh, thank you. I would say um, technology is critical in terms of uh, collecting data points, right? So I think um, this is where analytics can be most helpful in breaking it down by as many data points as, as possible. Um, you know, analytics are automated, but I think there really are very few people. Um, looking at readily available analytics, other than those working directly with them. Um, and perhaps sharing sharing those analytics. So I think um, I think it's really important and critical that that we disaggregate information, and it's important to show uh, breakdown whether it's NIL um, uh, or other areas by 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 gender, by race, uh, by sport, by <clears throat> revenue or non revenue. Per se, Olympic, not Olympic, but um, by event, by Final Four and other national championships. So I think um, disaggregating information as much as you can. And I think we've got to be more open and, and more aggressive in teaching and sharing uh, automated analytics. And I know um, Spry is doing that, which is great. And I think that there's, um, you know, there's so much information that you can glean from, from each platform that's available to just the general public. So, um, you know, but we must explain and know how to use that information, which is great value added for, um, for the customer. Uh, you know, one thing we learned um, so far just this year is that uh, the women's basketball players and say basketball players were actually driving more NIL dollars than, than um, most certain, if not all, some of the men's basketball players and programs. Um, you know, again, the Sedona Prince uh, video from uh, 2021 uh, and the momentum that that, that that caused. And now that's influencing even broadcast rights uh, for women, which is obviously a very big deal. So it, it's hard to hide anything anymore. Everyone has a platform. Um, and in many cases, it's proven absolutely critical for change. Um, uh, you know, I, uh, I was a swimmer in college and who knew? It turns out swimmers are popular. <laughs> so um, I think breaking down those data points and having um, by as many as possible uh, is really useful and also um, critical to share. Th thanks for that, Julie. I mean, I think you're, you're absolutely spot on in terms of just the ability to, to share that information and, and how that sharing of information can, can advance, uh, you know, so many different initiatives. And, and what, a, you know, from your perspective, Justin, on campus, you know, again, you know, you've, you've had the, the benefit of working a number of years in athletics in the pre-NIL era, and then, of course, in, in the last year or two since I, NIL has kind of been a part of the conversation. How, how has NIL changed the way you utilize technology or would like to be able to utilize technology going forward? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, NIL and ironically enough, um, COVID, right, I think have shined a, a greater light on the need for, you know, our technology and the, you know, the systems that we're using to be um, efficient. Um, and the reason why that's important, right, is because there's just, you know, as many compliance administrators know, um, th there is no shortage of work um, with NIL, right? Uh, you know, you have kids submitting uh, sometimes multiple um, disclosures for one NIL activity, right? So you could have potentially between, you know, one kid, you could have, um, you know, a legal contract, a marketing contract, um, 
And um, it's it's tough sometimes to wrap your head around uh, the speed with which you need to operate. Um, but we really couldn't be in that position um, without having tech to manage some of that for us. Um, and, and I guess what I mean when I say, you know, COVID-19 is, uh, you know, for a lot of us, um, a lot of a lot of our systems were online when COVID happened happened. Um, but I mean, God forbid that you did not have an online system when COVID happened, right? And trying to realize efficiencies uh, from getting things done and processing paperwork uh, while working from home, like probably what wasn't a very pleasurable experience. Um, and so, you know, I would say, you know, over the course of the last a uh, couple of years or so, I would say, because of all the things that have been happening from a national perspective, uh, you know, both you know, uh, globally and here in college athletics, uh, I think we've just seen now more than ever um, how important it is for us to um, to operate efficiently, right, and to be able to provide accurate information in real time and be able to track it. Um, here on campus, um, I think we're seeing uh, that there are a lot of people interested in the analytics and the data. Um, that's being generated by NIL by our student athletes, right? Uh, of course, you have prospective student athletes that want to know what type of NIL experience they may have at your given institution, right? You also have boosters, right, who may want to be involved um, from an NIL perspective and want to know, okay, well, you know, what does my involvement net, right? What does it gain and, and how can I best put dollars into uh, or opportunities into student athletes um, in student athletes' hands? And so, um, being able to speak to in real time uh, some of that information um, is, is critical. Um, and again, it happens so quickly uh, and so much of it at such a high clip um, that without tech to help you in that, um, it would be you know, a behemoth to manage. Um, just like we've seen with uh, the proliferation of you know, different um, accounts like ARMS and, and SPRY and Open Doors and um, Across the gamut, you can see that you know more and more you know compliance offices are um, are are being tasked with more and more responsibility with uh, the same amount of people, right, on the same amount of resources, and uh, without technology to help bridge that gap. Um, I think that there would be a huge gap in our ability to be able to do our jobs effect effectively and efficiently. Yeah, no, and and you you raised a really relevant point, I think, as it related to the pandemic, and I think we were all forced. To, to think of, of different ways, you know, to work and different ways to share and share information. And, you know, both of you have talked about, you know, the importance of analytics. And, and I think, again, that's, that's a technology driven field. And so, you know, COVID-19 forced all of us to, to get a little bit more comfortable using technology. Now, again, the student population is always a, a little bit ahead of where some of us older folks are with regard to that. But I think it's been, it was a certainly a great um, kind of impetus for all of us to get more comfortable with, with technology and the ways that technology can advance, you know, the things that we're all trying to get accomplished. And so you know, kind of continuing with that theme of NIL and technology and as that technology relates to student athletes, you know, given the fact that there is, you know, a strong correlation, you know, according to the data between education and NIL earnings, do you feel that there's, there's more of a willingness on the part of student athletes now to engage in educational outreach? Um, you know, again, you, you, we've talked about the, the rules ed that we um, have traditionally tried to, to provide for student athletes. And from my experience, I don't, I don't recall having a great deal or remembering a great deal of enthusiasm around that. Um, but as it relates to NIL, since there is the opportunity for there to be a, a you know, revenue opportunity for student athletes, on, in your experience on campus, have you noticed a, an increased willingness for students to now engage with some of this, this education? Um. Yeah, I would say, you know, I, I don't know the numbers off offhand, but, you know, obviously, you know, as we're as we're talking to our students um, about the different things that they need to do to um, be in good standing with the compliance office. Um, yeah, sometimes uh, kids do seem a little bit more apt to complete those things that might net dollars in their pockets, right? Like, as opposed to time from their schedule, right? Um, and so uh, we try to do a good job of integrating the two um, because we realize that, um, you know, for a student athlete, like um, having to listen to a 30 minutes 
um, that I'm about to sit through with our softball team here in a bit um, about NCAA rules and legislation is not the most exciting or riveting thing on the planet. And I get that. But um, trying to integrate both the delivery of compliance education uh, and NIL education, which, you know, ironically enough, have come one in the same thing in, in some instances, um, has proven beneficial. Um, and so I think it's just about meeting the students um, where their needs are uh, and where their wants are and trying to find some middle ground there. Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, uh, by and large, um, I think, you know, having systems that help them do things on their phone um, has proven to me to be the most effective way um, to get them to buy into both education and following through on, on their deliverables. Um, you know, kids are just on their phone so much now, right? Uh, whether it be through social media or interacting uh, with their loved ones or friends or family members. And the more you can push um, those interactions and those deliverables onto their phone in a, in a like very effective uh, and timely manner, uh, the better it will be uh, for your turnover rate, right? Like you'll just get more of those, you'll realize more of those returns uh, because kids are just more apt to do it on their phone. If they have to log onto the computer and do it, well, you know, um, your turnover rate or your, your push through rate will probably be a little bit lower, but um, that's that's what I've seen. Yeah, and, and again, great points. Um, I think particularly as, as you talk about the way student athletes you know, prefer to consume information and utilize technology. I think that that's so critical. And, and I think with, you know, with the enhancements that we've seen in technology, there are so many different ways uh, that, that we're all able to, to engage with it. And, and obviously that's, that's what we're here to talk about, you know, but I do think, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting and it, it's kind of a, an interesting dilemma that has, has emerged. I do think that while technology is great, there is a need to balance the breadth of the various technological options that are out there against our, our ability to actually, you know, have the bandwidth to manage it. And, and as an administrator on campus, you know, you deal with this, this every day, you know, most schools have some sort of platform, you know, to manage compliance. And, you know, there's, there are platforms for, for scheduling. And then some schools have platforms uh, that are used to, to manage communication and messaging and so forth. And of course, now with NIL, there's, there are platforms, there's been a huge proliferation of platforms that are managing these various disclosures. So I guess one of my other questions for you would be, as an administrator, you know, you're, you're dealing with, with all of this, you know, and, and I, I think there's probably a little bit of, of app fatigue, you know, not just with student athletes, but probably with, with administrators like yourself as well. So as an administrator, would you prefer more of a, a one-stop shop, kind of a, a all-in-one type solution? And, and if so, what would be the most critical features that, that you'd like to see included in a platform like that? Um, yeah, I'll take this one first, Julie. Um, I think I go back and forth on this one, to be honest, Todd. Um, I think an all-in-one solution sounds amazing, right? Um, and I think, you know, if it were possible, I think I would prefer that. And I think our coaches and student athletes would prefer that, um, but it's tough, right? I mean, there's just so many different needs across the department um, and it's tough for any one platform to encompass all of those needs holistically, right? Um, like when I think about uh, some of our bigger sports, right? Like what's really important to them is that recruiting pipeline, right? When I think about compliance, I think about workflows, right? And managing data. Um, academics is the same way. Uh, and then when you talk about NIL, right? You're talking about, you know, the need to be flexible um, and accurate uh, and be able to represent a whole lot of data um, and to be able to break it down automatically in real time to be able to proliferate that out to the different constituents that need it. Um, I think that I, I would prefer that. I think most would prefer that. And I think that there, there is definitely some app fatigue um, for sure. Uh, and it's just because, right, like, you know, anytime you're introducing any new form of technology, right, you're always going to run into the the crowd of, oh, well, we used to do it this way. It was so much better, right? And so not only are you trying to learn the new app, but you're also trying to wean people off of the old way of doing things and, and adopt a new way. And change can sometimes be 
daunting, right? And and not everyone likes change. And especially when, you know, you've been coaching or you've been an administrator and in your given role for the last 15 years and what you did for the last 15 years works perfectly fine. Um, and so it's it can be tough um, to advocate for that change, especially when it's needed for efficiencies. But I think we've all found in the end that it's needed. Um, and I think, yes, I think while I think people would prefer a one-stop shop, I think that there would also be a lot of pain points uh, in terms of uh, educating and ramping people up to speed to use it effectively. Uh, and then I also think just about just, you know, from a business perspective, how tough it would be to, to manage the back end of that, right? Um, because you've got to scale up for every need in a compliance department and an academic department and, a, and you know, our, from a team perspective, from an NIL perspective. Um, and then what happens if, you know, that system goes, <laughs> goes down, God forbid, uh, now you've got uh, some issues, not just with, you know, one piece of data, but all of your data. So um, I think that there are some positives and negatives to glean, but I think from, I think for the most part, I think administrators and um, campus personnel would prefer a one-stop shop if it were possible, for sure. Sure, sure. And well, and, and I appreciate that insight kind of coming from, from someone who's in the, in the fray every day, uh, dealing with these various um, platforms, you know, on, on campus. And I also do want to be mindful of, of the obligation that you have right now to do that very thing. So um, again, I, I do have um, probably one more question that I'll direct to Julie in case you need to, to hop off and, and, uh, and uh, deal with your, uh, with your students there. But, but again, thank you so much, Justin, for joining us today. Um, Julie, just to continue the conversation uh, with, with you, I, I know that your issues may be a little bit different, um, you know, being, you know, working in, in your work with the Drake Group versus being on campus. But I wanted to come back to something you touched on earlier. You were talking about just the importance of sharing information and kind of breaking down silos and so forth as it comes to, as it pertains to the, the, the various types of information that you're receiving and processing in your work with student athletes. So I noticed on the Drake Group website, you have a section called Athlete Athlete Rights 101. And the purpose of that was to communicate important facts that every PSA and current student athlete should know about the issues that are that pertain to them in college athletics. So as it kind of relates to technology and this sharing of information and capturing some of the data points that you touched on earlier, what are the what are the ways that you've been able to break down those silos and and to to effectively share tech, share information and how have you been able to use technology in your effort to do that? Sure, well, it, you know, it's not without, uh, it's not without challenge. <laughs> I think, um, you know, at the Drake Group, we're, we're a relatively small group made up of um, a lot of busy professionals. And I think we're, we're kind of scrappy in what we can accomplish with the tools that uh, we have. Um, and in terms of sort of being a clearinghouse for information, you know, that's, that's something that's, Sort of difficult to monetize, right? So um, we have our webinars uh, that have had a, a far reach in a, in a short period of time. Um, it's great that Spry is doing them. Um, I think just, it's really important to have these conversations and to, um, you know, in, engage uh, all interested parties and, and make it readily available. Um, I think, uh, you know, and, and then extending that, you know, we, you have your, your webinars, um, for example, um, where you extend your platform, you continue to share and, and integrate information. We put a lot of effort into, um, you know, focusing on and contemplating follow-up questions and answers, our Q&As from our webinars, and we integrate those with our recordings and make those readily available on our site and, and easily accessible to anyone. Um, we're having our first symposium in DC this May 19th, where we, we will engage back uh, in person with, with policymakers, with um, our first Allen Sachs Symposium. So I, I think recognizing that your website is a platform, your webinars are a platform, um, your social media is a platform, but again, the challenge is to also, you know, bring them together, right? And um, the only thing missing there is telling people face-to-face uh, -face in a lot of cases. So um, the extent that companies like Spry can teach people about, you know, their amplification message, message and the big piece of compliance, which we know is critical, um, you know, uh, you know, which one is better for reaching the, the type of person or organization you're looking to amplify is liking enough, how do you get people to share further um, and encourage people to go to your website and using the tools that you have 
um, to reach them and, and get them there and provide that, that expertise and useful information. Um, and you know, now we have college athletes, they should have easy access to this and in turn to the marketplace because that's, that's what this new world is, right? So um, I think it's important to ask, what are the entry points for college athletes in schools? There's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, and of course, we know in college sports, you know, something again, Spry does well as institutions and college athletes, a big piece of compliance. So I think um, we'll never escape that, right? We all, we'll always have the rules and regulations and to abide by no matter how in flux they are, um, which makes these tools all the more critical and necessary. Right. Well, well stated, uh, Julie, and, and so um, that, that actually brings us to the end of our panel discussion. Um, I'd like to thank the panelists once again, you know, Justin, Julie, um, thank you for your valuable insight on this really important topic. It's a wonderful conversation, guys, and thank you so much for participating.